first thing is I wanted to talk about certain certain aspects. When you talk about Scrum, Scrum is is one of the frameworks that uses agile principles. Okay. So we have learned about the twelve principles. Scrum is is one of those simple uh, framework which uses most of the principles uh, that we have learned. Now, if you have to go to a one place to another place, say for example if I have to travel from Bangalore to Delhi, then I have different modes of transport. Like I can go by car, I can go by train, I can go by bus, I can go by flight, or any other combinations. But each one of these will be in a different uh, advantages and disadvantages. Uh, going by flight might save money, uh, save time, but then it takes more money or something. Similarly, if you have to reach your goal, for example, you are here and you want to build the winning product, there are different modes of development. One of the way is waterfall. That we all know from traditional, which is also called traditional uh, method, we use waterfall to build the product. Similarly, we have Scrum. We have ESDM, XP, Crystal, all these are UP. All these are different ways of reaching your goal. Similar to bus journey, train journey, driving the car or even walking, each one is a is a way to reach your goal. Now what we are trying to do is now focus on one of the frameworks which is just Scrum. So I am going to explain you the, the Scrum framework, how is this uh, applying the Agile principles and what this framework looks like, how does the workflow happen in, in the uh, Scrum framework. So, we know that there are customers who are typically like a king or a head of the product. Okay. So he has all his needs and wants. Similarly, there are other people like there could be your team member, stakeholders, market, it could be your competition, it could be, a, it could be anybody else. Okay? So all these people have their own needs. So they all pile up all these needs and wants uh, into a funnel And, and there is one person who is who is holding a filter at the funnel. And this person is whom we call the product owner. The product owner is, is that person who talks to all of these people and then identifies of all the needs and wants what are the items that fall into product backlog? So what are the items? That are in product backlog. So he, he filters out and let only those items that have value to buy them. Okay. So Now, since this guy is, is handling complete requirements here, there is a lot of discussion at this point with the people who are giving the requirements. Now, if you look at even the team is one of the members who can influence or need. That means the product owner works with the team, stakeholders, market, competition, XYZ people and the customer client 
to ensure that he has a right priority and right set of needs into the product backlog. So this product backlog is a to-do list for a product. How is this organized? When he filters, he takes the high business value to the low business value. Typically, if the business value is high to the customer, he places it at the top of the stack and as you find low value, pushes it down the stack. Now, if you look at this, everything that is high value have to be ready for the teams to start working. So they have to be small in size and as it goes down, it does not matter. So even if they are like large, it's okay. They could be small, but even if it is large, we don't mind that. Why? Because as we go from top to bottom, we will start turning out more. So this is the, the size. And this one is the value. Now, what happens is this. The teams meet together at regular interval, which is in the sprint planning meeting. So the team has an activity called sprint planning. In sprint planning, the team looks at the top of the stack. Planning meeting, the, the teams look at the top of the stack and then they pull these items and then they plan for the sprint goal. What is that we want to achieve in the next sprint duration? Sprint is a unit of time. How much time do we want to spend working on this particular top of the stack? So they look at the top of the stack and then they analyze, then plan for, hey, this is our sprint goal and this is what we are going to come up and finish for it. So while they finish their sprint planning, the outcome of sprint planning is, is another to-do list. And this one is specific to the sprint. And it is called Sprint Backlog. So like how you have a product backlog, there is a Sprint Backlog. Now, if you look at the relation, Sprint Backlog is nothing but the top of the stack. So this is the first, first one. So the Sprint Backlog is always on the top of the product backlog. Now, the teams will, will work on, that means we have a dev team, Scrum Master and then the Product Owner all together planning for this video. Now, after this, the team now has the development time. <coughs> so this was one of the activities where the teams planned for a short duration. Now they have a development time. During this development time, on a day-to-day -day basis, what they do is, they inspect and adapt on the sprint goal. So there is a sprint goal here, which is set. So the sprint goal has been inspected and adapted in a ceremony or an activity called Daily Scrum. The goal of Daily Scrum is to inspect and adapt if we are on par with the goal that we set. Can we reach the goal? So in order to do that, what teams do is they ask typically three questions. Like, what did I do? What am I trying to do? And are there any impediments? So if you, if I have to walk from this corner to that corner, what, what does that require? Say for example, I keep one step. What is more important to me is like, what have I done so far, so that I can talk about what is done. And then, I look forward for what am I trying to do, how much is spending, and what am I trying to do. So my goal is, I am trying to move one step ahead. If there is any impediment, now I can say that, oh, there is an impediment, and hence, I cannot move forward. So I need to remove this impediment before I reach the goal. Okay? So, that is what happens in a daily scrum. Daily scrum is a short activity where team members will stand together in the form of a daily stand-up 
and then they they discuss this at the end of the daily scrum they do an inspect and adapt and plan for what they need to do for today so this is an inspect and adapt and plan for the day this was planning for the whole sprint this is now very specifically for the day what am i trying to work on today now this continues because this is going to happen every day that means you have lot of inspect and adapt cycle so if you want to reach the goal <coughs> you are inspecting and adapting inspecting and adapting towards reaching the goal so the chances that you will fail are less or you will know in well in advance that you are you are you are not able to reach your goal that's the whole purpose of being in scrum now the second thing is after the development time is over this is this is the time axis so after the development time is over teams stop working whatever they have done they stop working and then they get into another activity called sprint review sprint review is an activity where the teams will stop they look at what they have developed as per the sprint planning and the sprint backlog that is potentially shippable or potentially deliverable to the customer so they look at that and have a review of the working software so the input would be the working software which has high value during the sprint plus the acceptance criteria that the customer wants to see what is that they want to accept on and then the acceptance itself you do a demo of this so one of the way of taking a sprint review is is a demo so typically you do a demo once you do a demo people can actually see the working software and hence they will be able to give you a yes or a no or some feedbacks and the whole point is uh one of my uh, friends at the cst when i was working he introduced me to this if you have a question mark and if it has to tend to a shock what is the timeline that we expect as short as possible so this is the timeline so if i have a open question it should be answered as early as possible if i have an assumption it should be clarified as early as possible so all those things that we put in the product backlog is is an assumptions and the and the imaginations of the customer saying that oh this is how my pro final product is going to look like so this meeting is is a demo of the product so that you get a sh a response on whether the customer who thought about something is it in line with that so if at all there is any differences we can reduce the timeline as early as possible so in scrum this happens every sprint so you stop whatever is done demo it take a feedback and then go to the next step so once the feedback is done so you have a potentially shippable product increment as part of this uh, review now what teams do is after this meeting they go to another meeting or another activity which is sprint retrospective okay in sprint retrospective teams look back again they stop they look back in time and then they inspect they are again inspecting and adapting to see hey we have already done some development work now if we have to become more effective and efficient so the key point is becoming more effective efficient in what we do let us be inspect and adapt so the teams will sit together in a retrospective inspect and adapt the goal to become more effective and efficient and then they plan their future by changing their behavior by changing their structure by probably having new items that they want to try out so they are typically working on how to become more effective so this particular meeting the key point is this the sprint retrospective is purely on the process 
and people. The focus, in, when people come to this meeting, if they are only pro focusing on the process and the people, how to become more effective? How can my process become more effective, efficient? How can I become more effective? And as a team, how can we become more effective and efficient? When you come to this, this is purely on the product. How to make the product better, higher quality, good value, if at all there are any chances to fail, you need to know that earlier. So this is purely on the product, this is purely on the people and process. Now you have to inspect and adapt. This is one inspect and adapt on the product, one inspect and adapt on the people and process. There are continuous inspect and adapt. Inspect and adapt, inspect and adapt. Continuous inspect and adapt throughout the pro this development time for you to be on track, okay? So that you don't miss out certain things and you're always focused. And once the people come up with the changes, they again go back to the sprint planning activity. So they continue this sprint planning for the full time, okay? And this goes on and on. While they come to the next one, now they are looking at the next set of backlog items. So they will pull, this is the first time, this is probably the second time, and then they go on to the third one. Till this cycle is going to go on, and you are producing an increment till the product backlog becomes zero. Okay. Now if you look at this framework, this framework is inspect and adapt. One, inspect and adapt. First one. Second one, it is incremental. See this, you are incrementally building a product. So it is incremental. Third, it is iterative. Because you are not doing it one time, you are doing all these activities repeatedly till the end. So you are iterating over the process. So, it helps you inspect and adapt. Why you inspect and adapt? It is helping you build incrementally and iteratively. So, you can say the Scrum framework is, is an incremental and iterative framework. Okay? So, this is the, the Scrum framework. Now, if I have to put this into a timeline, let me put it into a timeline. What happens when? So if I draw, uh, for example, if I, yeah, if I if I draw the time, if I draw the time, then this is sprint planning. Sprint planning on the time scale. After sprint planning. On a daily basis, we have daily scrum. Right? Now, after the sprint development time is over, the sprint length is over, we have a review. Sprint review. After this, we have a sprint retrospective. This is how the things flow. And, and after this, after retrospective, it has to repeat the cycle. So now, you will again have a sprint planning. So it's a repeated cycle. Now, if you look at this, the sprint backlog, the product backlog has to be ready for the teams to start planning. It has to be ready. So, the team along with the product owner works in between in another activity called backlog refinement.
backlog refinement is another activity where the teams will now focus on what is the backlog that is available, how do we keep it ready, understand the acceptance criteria, understand the list of things that needs to be done, and then are at par with what is the product owner's acceptation, what is that he needs, and then they keep the product backlog item up to mark. So this meeting happens in between the sprint at regular intervals. So for this sprint, on this time scale, it will happen somewhere here. So during the product backlog refinement, you look ahead on what is coming up next. You are not worried about the current sprint, but you are looking at what is coming up in future. So this is how the, the teams will start looking at the future stuff. Okay? So, uh, there are a couple of things that I want to talk to. There are already three inspect and adapts. Right? The whole process is transparent because everything that the team is doing is usually kept as an open field. So there are, so there are uh, uh, task boards which the teams prepare. So the task board will have the current status of the team. The task board is very similar to how we have a scoreboard in cricket. So the teams see this task board and they get the ability, intrinsic ability to inspect and adapt as they are working. So if the task board is showing them the progress, they get to have that strategic planning on a day-to-day -day basis to become better in reaching the goal. Okay? So the task board is, is essential and during this planning, what the team do is, they have a chart which is what is a work pending. and the duration, the time. So they map that as a burn down chart to see that at any given point of time, what is the work that is pending for the team to do. So this is called a sprint, back, uh, sprint burn down chart. At the same time, when the product owner is working with all of these people and there is a release, the release is expected to be at this particular value. So what product owner does is, over a time, he looks at what is the value added, what is the value added, and then he starts incrementally doing that. That is, cumulatively accumulating what total value is added. This total cumulative value added is called release burn up chart. Now I give you a metaphor on this. If you are taking a loan, at any given point of time, you want to know how much should I pay back? How many more months should I pay? What is my pending money that I have to pay back? So you are always looking at a burn down. When am I going to hit zero? Okay? Now, with the same bank, if you start depositing money into a recurring fixed deposit, now you are doing a burn up because after every quarter, after every month, you want to know how much your value is added. What is my new value, how much do I have in stock now. So this is value addition. So every time you are getting something added into your, you add a burn up, this is a burn down. So this is purely representing the state of the product. Now, who is responsible for this? The product owner. Who is responsible for this? The team. The Scrum Master usually help them create it and then maintain it. But team's responsibility to make sure that. Now if you look at all of this, where is the Scrum Master? I don't see a Scrum Master. Where is the Scrum Master? He's in the team. He's in the team. So this is all the team. And this is a self-organizing cross-functional team usually between say 5 to 8, 9, or 6 to 8, okay, I'll keep it as 6 to 8. Now, if you look at this, where is the Scrum Master? Scrum Master is, is here. This is
That means Scrum Master is everywhere. So what is he trying to do? He is trying to make sure that the team has no impediments, the team is self-organizing, the product owner has good negotiations done and then the product backlog is ready for the teams. The team is effectively doing the sprint planning, the review, the daily standards or the, the daily scrum, retrospective, backlog refinement. So Scrum Master is ensuring that the whole Scrum framework is adapted in a right way. He ensures that people are doing the right things and he is making sure that people are effective and efficient at any given point of time using Scrum. So he is a person who will have leadership qualities, driving the ability to get things done within the teams, making the teams independent of the, uh, of the impediments, getting removing the impediments and all those stuff. So he is always, he is not just associated with, with the team alone, he is also working with all aspects. Maybe if there is a problem in planning, he brings in effective planning stuff, makes this retrospective interesting and good. So he works on all the places. So this is the one team and a scrum framework. Any questions on this so far? So now, uh, one quick question: uh, What happens if the team decides to pick up items? Obviously, as part of the sprint planning, they would have picked up. Then, towards the end, they obviously, you know, there are some items which they can't, you know, complete. So, does it go back to the for product owner to reprioritize and then put it back to the backlog? Yes. So, typically, there is a, that's an interesting question. What happens is this: the whole purpose of Scrum is to inspect and adapt and iteratively develop a product increment. So what happens is, when the product backlog items are picked with a high value, the team, at the time of, on this time scale, as we plan, so during the sprint planning, okay, as on today, they pick up, okay, this is the high value that we are going to achieve. This is the high value, which is in the product backlog, that we are forecasting that it is going to be done. But this is just a forecast by the team, saying that we will be able to achieve this based on their capacity, based on the days, specific team's knowledge and then how we can do it. Now what happens is, if the teams get to a trouble and they are not able to do the last item, in that case, there is nothing uh, wrong because our forecast did not say that we will do 100% of this. Probably do so much was a forecast. Now what happens is, this particular item which is not done will not be demoed because it is not ready. And the other items also, for example, they worked on the four, but even this is not done. Now I am introducing you to a very interesting concept which is not done. So there is something called as doneness, right? Yeah, definition of done. After this, I am going to talk to you about definitions of done. So the teams look at each parameter during their sprint with the definition of done items. And then claim that, okay, they are 100% done for the uh, product development and they are ready for the review. So what happens is if the user stories don't meet the definition of done criteria, then they don't show it. Also the undone or the items that are not worked on will go back to the product backlog and typically the product owner may reprioritize or keep the priority at the same point. But it is the, the call of the product owner because by the time your development time is passed by, there could have been changes into the priority now. So depending on that time's priority, the product owner changes it. Okay? So now, so this is this is what is gonna happen, and uh, the team is just gonna forecast. So if I have to talk about this, it is like this. In this time journey, in this time journey, at every given point of time, you plan for something, you stop, literally you stop all your work, and then do a review, that is, you do a check on your product. Hey, how is that product that we have developed so far? Is it good, bad, does it need any improvement, any comments from the uh, uh, customers or the stakeholders? And then you, you continue your work. So, it is like, if I have to reach from this corner to that corner as my goal, I keep one step, 
I look back and see, hey, have I done it in the right way? Yes, I have done it. Good. Then I keep back the next step. Have I done it in the right step? Yes. Then the next step. So you keep going with that. Okay? So that is the whole point of this. Is that, does that make sense? Okay. So this is, is the Scrum framework. To summarize, there are three roles. The product owner, development team, and the Scrum master. Together all of these people are called the Scrum team. Okay. Now, what are the artifacts that are in this? The product backlog, product increment, this is a shippable product increment, that is another artifact. And then we have burn up charts, the burn down charts. Then we have activities which are which are part of the scrum. The so one is sprint planning, then we have daily scrum. Sprint the review and then sprint retrospective. These are one, two, three, four. The fifth one is backlog refinement, which happens in the sprint. Okay, so these things. So we do it in the backlog refinement. Typically, it will be done in between the sprint time. So it is not at the beginning, but at the end. Of the okay. So this is the high level view of what the uh, scrum is. In the next two days of a session, we are going to jump deep dive into each of this and then learn more about what is the goal, how do you do it, what are the inputs, outputs, who plays what role, how do you get to doing that. So in the next two days, we are going to go deep into how is the product, work, what does it do, what is sprint planning, what does happening, all these things, daily stand-ups, daily scrum, the, the sprint review, retrospective, how does the task go look? We are going to jump deep dive into each one and no more. Okay? Yeah. Okay, team. Uh, now what I am going to uh, discuss to you is a very interesting and important parameters in, in teams while you are working. The first thing is, as a team, you are working on some of the requirements, some of the product backlog items. And the team, pull the product backlog items based on certain criteria, And these criteria are nothing but definition of ready. So these days people have started using this definition of ready so that the team knows that the product backlog item that the team is working on is absolutely ready and they can work on it. So when you say that it is ready, the, the team lists down certain things that make your product backlog item as readiness criteria point. So, this definition of ready is why the team for product owner. So, the team says, product owner, hey product owner, I want you to keep ready all these items in this format. So, what is a typical definition of ready things that the team look forward for? It's like small in size, it is acceptance criteria are clear, there are no more uh, unknowns in the acceptance criteria, it has been discussed well in advance, that is it has been groomed, okay? And then uh, probably the priority is well known, the priority is not changing or priority is stable well known. And then a couple of other things, like the dependencies, risks, all known. Now, now, the definition of ready is by the team to the product owner. Similarly, after the team has done their work, the product owner now says, okay, should I accept or not? So this is called acceptance criteria. Acceptance criteria are those items that make your product acceptable for a product owner. So who defines this? This is by product owner for the team who is working. So product owner says, if I have to accept this, you need to give me one, two, three, done. Or these are the acceptance criteria. So typically your acceptance criteria are related to your functions, Functional requirements, non-functional requirements, performance, 
So it is, it is at the product level, what your customer wants as a end user. In between this, you know that the team is working, working on a one-liner, that is a product backlog item, till the product is, is ready. During this period, the team has a set of things which they call the done criteria. And this done criteria is why team for the team. That means the team decides on what are those items that we have to do to claim that we are 100% done and the item is ready to be shipped. Okay, so this is all those items the team claim. If we do this, then we are 100% done. Now, there are situations when acceptance criteria would be met, but not all done criteria will be done. In that case, it is for the team and by the team. So the team will never say we are ready for this demo. These things typically reflect the product process. And more importantly, I'm going to write it in different color, it's the quality. If a product has bad quality, then probably it is because the team is not adhering to the definition of done and they are not producing product with 100% done criteria met. Okay? So these are definition of done items and one of the most important definition of done items that I usually say is it has to be no or zero open defects. That means if the team while it was working on some product get to know that there is a problem, you fix it before going to the next item rather than saying that I am going to work as a defect on this item later on. So there is no defect open which is see in the particular story. Make sense now? Yeah. So it is like, are the product backlog items ready? The team asks for it, product owner keeps them ready. Once the product items, uh, product backlog items are ready, the team pull them and start working and they work on definition of done criteria. If, not, if all the definition of done criteria are met, then the team also knows that it has been, it is ready for the acceptance criteria check. So they give a demo or a review and then see if the product owner can accept this. So product owner defines the acceptance criteria and then team adheres to it. More importantly, this is what is important. Definition of done by the team for the team. And each one is specific to the team. So what you have is definition of done might vary from team to team, but there are certain things that are common for most of the teams. At the organization level goals, at the scrum team level, or the sprint level, release level. So definition of done will be to some extent common, but there could be some addition and uh, uh, some option, uh, more and less depending on the team that you are specifically working on. So this is what I wanted to talk about certain parameters that help you in your scrum teams be better while you are working on a product or product items. Any questions on this? So this we done in the beginning of the event like uh, when you do the product that you are doing. So, what happens is this, when you are looking at the, uh, the whole product backlog, typically you identify the definition of done items way ahead in the uh, uh, sprint backlog. Yeah, in the sprint planning. But sprint planning is one of the opportunities for you to openly discuss in your meeting, saying that, hey, there is a requirement and I think for this requirement we have to do this done right here. So you can edit that during your sprint planning as well. Yes. But once you are fixed on this is what we are trying to do as part of the definition of done, then the team adheres to it. Everybody looks at it. So some of the examples of definitions of done. Oh, the acceptance criteria has been met. Uh, there's no self one or self two or zero defects. Zero open defects. Code review. Code review is complete. Check-in is done. Quality is being checked. 
testing is done, hundred percent development is done. All checkpoints are there. All checkpoints that the team ensures to make sure that the process, product, and the quality are all up to high. So definition of done helps team deliver high quality product. Yes. It only talks about the high quality. It doesn't talk about the product itself being uh, extremely good because the product depends now on the, the skill of the product owner who decides what should the product contain. So, I always say this, if you have a good development team, if the product owner gives you a low value requirements, the product team, the, the scrum, the development team is going to pull that low value stuff but do it in a very high quality, that means zero defects, no thing. But when it has been accepted and gone to the customer, maybe the customer might not see the value and the product will go just as a, uh, it's not so good. So the problem now is the product owner not being able to identify the value, but the team has done the excellent job. Now you assume another situation. A very high value, very good product has been there, but the team does not adhere to the definition of done, their quality goes for a toss. They don't finish some of the items just because the acceptance criteria are met if they start demoing and then showing the review. Then the quality becomes bad. So in the market, the product will fail because of the quality. Now who is responsible for it and accountable? The team which is working is responsible. So the scrum teams are at the stake. Okay, I hope this makes sense. So let's go to the next topic after the break.